friends, this is the Miss Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead with an apology. I am so sorry that my cell phone data kept dropping the connection for our live stream. <coughs> I'm going to be talking to my cell service provider tomorrow and giving them an earful because what am I paying for? So it all comes back again to service, right? I mean, I, I still go to Tim Hortons and congratulate them when they get my tea right because it's so, so rare. It's so seldom, you know? And uh, because, I mean, the turnover of, a, of employees in Tim Hortons is insane, really insane. Um, so let's call this pet peeves because that's one of my pet peeves paying for a service that that's not being provided right um, as for the Celtic knot scarf our Celtic loop scarf I know people are waiting patiently for the second half I had finished that entire video uh, or the filming of it when I found out the entire second half was unusable Due to background noise so I have to knit that in order I have to knit that in order to film it in order to finish it in order to edit it to bring it to you okay and it's harvest season it's canning season and and I just right now the only time I get to knit is if I sit down and watch TV at night and nine times out of ten in the evenings I'm sitting here editing right because I'm not a studio I don't have a camera person I don't have I don't have you know expert lighting and sound production and I don't have an editor well I do but it's my computer and I, I'm the chief right so I'm not just a videographer okay I have to do all that work and whenever Howie makes a video which he he's really ticking me off with not making videos um, I have to edit his because he won't right or can't so and I'm, I'm ticked because he's rebuilt the uh, rebuilt the carburetor and the starter on the snowblower um, he put a new pull start and electric, electric start and fixed the hydraulic handle on the log splitter. And then he started working on the generator when I said, are you filming any of this? And he just went, oh, right. So <laughs> I'm really sorry that you didn't get to see all that fantastic work that he's been doing on getting us ready for winter. Now that, oh, and, and he put a new uh, chain on the chainsaw and oiled it and, you know, he's just, and he's just got to change the oil and all that. But those whole things should all be videos, right? There are people every day going out and buying chainsaws and all these things and they, they, you know, need to know how to maintain them, right? That log splitter, that log splitter is 40 plus years old because when I was... I'm 55 and when I was 12 we moved to Apsley, Ontario and dad got in logs the next year so I was 13 and he cut up the logs with a chainsaw but then started splitting them by hand with a maul and that's when like the log splitting parties at our house started you know my brothers would would come up and my brother-in-law and even my nephews you know Aaron was like six years old I can still see him swinging the mall you know dad bought a log splitter so I was less than 15 years old that's Dallas I will call you back sweetheart I was under 15 years old when dad bought that log splitter because it was a necessary tool so that that log splitter is is you know it's a Briggs and Stratton right so that's what Howie's been doing without filming it 
And uh, my next project is when I get off of here, I'm going to make my apple jelly or my crab apple jelly. And I got so much juice that I may take some crab, like the apple juice and add berries to it and make a, you know, um, maybe a crab apple, blueberry, a little bit of strawberry from what I got from the garden um, jam. I'll think about that. Uh, and then I've got to scrub and cook and dehydrate and can potatoes. So that's where I am with that. And then by that time that's done, the carrots will be up at the, up at the roadside, the 35 pound bags of deer carrots will be, will be ready. I mean, it's an on and on and on thing. It's that time of year. So, um, I appreciate your patience when it comes to the scarf. Okay. Once you know how to make that scarf, it, it knit, you can knit it without even thinking. Okay. It's that simple from beginning to end. And you'll, you know, you'll have the pattern in your head once you see it. I'm, but I'm just really sorry. It's taking time to get it done because I'm so busy right now. Another pet peeve of mine, taxes versus cash. I had a service provided here recently. Well, yesterday, what's today? Sunday? No, Friday. And I, this, this service is provided, I've got to word this correctly. The services provided um, were discounted by a coupon that is paid to them by our municipality so that we get a deal to have this service done. Well, <clears throat> last month, I hurt my back. If, if everybody remembers, I, my back was out for a good three, three, two weeks. And then my shoulder went out and I was under, I was, I was heavily medicated, um, at the time that this service was supposed to be provided. So when they showed up, what I thought was a day early, it turns out I'd lost a day to pain. <clears throat> and they, I was told that, um, they would, I would have to rebook it. They didn't tell me that if I paid extra, they would have prepared the area. Um, we're supposed to prepare the area and I was a day late. And so they said, no, you'll have to rebook it. So we rebooked it and I rebooked it. And then I was told the service then got slapped on almost 50% more for them to come a second time. Now, at the first time when I booked it, they asked how I would be paying cash, check, or credit card. And I said cash, so they quoted the price. Right? $180. Then when I phoned to rebook, they said, because we have to come back a second time, it's going to cost you $100 more. And I said, okay. I have no choice we'll book it. And, uh, and that was, this is the most polite version of the con conversation. So the area was prepared when they showed up on Friday and I was here in my office and I heard him come to the door and I didn't want to deal with the dog. So I asked him to come around by the pool and talk to me through the window. And he said, one of the first things he said, I said, the area is prepared and he said, good. Do you have the money? And I said, yes. And he said, cash or check. And I said, check. And he walked away. And then he came back and said, you realize there's going to be taxes if you write a check. And I said, I've already written the check and it was my last check. And he, and he said, I don't know. And I said, because the truth, so he went to call his boss to see. And his boss obviously said, you have to take the payment because he said, when he said there's taxes, if you pay by check. And I said, you may want taxes 
but I wasn't quoted with taxes. I was quoted $280. That's what I wrote the last check in my book for. So he walked away and obviously he made a phone call and they said, I guess you're just going to have to do it, right? But it begs the question because he, he went and did what he did. And then when he came back for the check, I handed it to him and he handed me a receipt. And because I know if they wouldn't accept the $280, they would have had to bill me. And this was the long Labor Day weekend Friday. And if you bill me, you might not get it for 30 days. Right? So you take the check and hope, you know, you get, but you have to claim it. Now, this is what bothered me after, after the fact. I was given one price for cash and another for check. So it begs me to wonder when they accept cash, are they claiming it? Because I'm pretty sure being the, law, the Labor Day weekend Friday, they were hoping to pocket that extra hundred bucks they charged me without claiming it if they were going to claim anything at all. So that pisses me off. That really does. That they offer people who are obviously, you know, struggling financially a cash price. And then when they come back and charge me a hundred dollars more because I explained I was in pain and heavily medicated at the time and that I had missed a day. Didn't matter. They're going to charge me $100 more to come back. And then they bitch because I give them a check for the price that they agreed on because now I don't have, I'm not paying the taxes. They wanted an extra $40 for taxes if I wrote the check. Tell me that's not fishy. And they did a substandard job. I can't tell you how because that I would be giving away the company, but I, I'm not so. So that that really bothers me, right? You gonna pay cash? Or you gonna pay check? Well, if you pay, I say why? Because if you pay check cash, it's cheaper. Cheaper for who? I bet you the government would like to hear about people making deals like that. Right? I don't know. Just saying. Anyway, I got to go. I got apple jelly to make. And yes, there will be a video. This is the Mrs. Wolfie from our half acre homestead saying, when you pay for something, you make sure that you are getting the service that you pay for. If not, talk to somebody about it. Take care. God bless. I hope everybody's had a wonderful um, Labor Day weekend. Howie's out in the coach watching TV with the dog because I am going to make jelly. Take care. God bless.